Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about the acute side effects of chemotherapy drugs. In order to understand this, we have to just recap the cell cycle. So a cell at rest can enter the cell cycle from the G0 phase. It enters the cell cycle, the first phase being the G1, where the organelle duplicates. And then it's the S phase, where the DNA duplicates. And then the G2 phase, where the cell prepares itself before mitosis, the M phase, where a cell divides into two identical daughter cells. These new daughter cells can then re-enter the cell cycle or it can go back to rest at the G0 phase. Chemotherapy drugs target different phases of the cell cycle. And because of this, it thus also targets cells that have a high turnover. Because chemotherapy drugs target different phases of the cell cycle, it will thus target the cells that actually enter the cell cycle more frequently. These cells include skin cells, the lining of the mucosa, and even your blood cells from the bone marrow. And because of this, chemotherapy drugs also have these very important side effects to keep note of. So let's talk about these acute side effects. The first most common side effects of chemotherapy drugs is nausea and vomiting. If we zoom into the medulla of the brainstem, it contains an area called the chemoreceptor trigger zone. Chemotherapy toxins will actually target the chemoreceptor trigger zone because these chemotherapy toxins actually circulate in the blood and the chemoreceptor trigger zone, or CTZ, is not within the blood-brain barrier. And so these toxins can stimulate the chemoreceptor trigger zone. When the chemoreceptor trigger zone is stimulated, it will stimulate another area near it called the vomiting center. And the vomiting center will essentially uh, induce or cause the emetic reflex, the vomiting reflex. Obviously, one way to go around this is to give the patients having chemotherapy anti-emetics. Other side effects acutely of chemotherapy drugs include uh, problems in the brain, such as mood changes, it's also known as chemo brain. Because chemotherapy drugs target cells with high turnover, it also target your hair cells because they also have a high turnover. And so you get alopecia, loss of hair. Similarly, the lining of your mucosa, such as the mouth, um, also is also a potential for side effects from chemotherapy drugs, such as methotrexate. You can develop ulcers and also mucositis. Another important side effect is also the constipation and diarrhea. As well, because your hair and nails have also high turnover, um, chemotherapy agents can cause changes in skin and nails. Some chemotherapy agents acutely can cause side effects of the nerves, specifically chemotherapy agents targeting the M phase of the cell cycle, such as vinca alkaloids and taxines. And these guys can cause what's called peripheral neuropathy, being a sensory change or even pain within the peripheries. Another important side effect of chemotherapy agents uh, acutely, but mainly uh, long term, is gonadal dysfunction. But this again depends on the duration, uh, age and the sex of the patient. So for example, the female has an ovary and the ovary contains many follicles. Each cycle, each menstrual cycle, the follicle uh, will grow um, and essentially rupture, releasing an egg. Um, now, chemotherapy drugs can affect any part of this cycle and, and can actually cause uh, an ovulation, so causing the, ovary, causing the follicle not to ovulate. Long-term, chemotherapy agents um, can affect the follicles itself, causing premature menopause. For male, the testes is a site where sperm production occurs, spermatogenesis. Chemotherapy agents uh, can actually target um, the spermatogenesis and actually decrease spermatogenesis because spermatogenesis has a high turnover. Every day, males are producing sperm. Long term and very rarely now, uh, chemotherapy agents can um, stop sperm production altogether. Probably the most important acute side effect of chemotherapy agents is its effect on bone marrow. So for example, you have your pluripotent stem cell which can become a myeloid progenitor cell. Your myeloid progenitor cell um, can make a few cells. Possibly the three important ones here are your neutrophils, which are your acute immune cells for acute inflammation. They have a very short half-life, about eight hours. 
your myeloid progenitor cell can eventually become a megakaryocyte and release platelets, which are important for initiating the clotting cascade. Now, platelets have a short half-life as well, about seven days. Finally, the myeloid progenitor cell can become red blood cells, your erythrocytes, which carry oxygen throughout your body. These guys have about 120 days. Now, you can imagine if chemotherapy agents are used, they target cells with high turnover, and so they can induce myelosuppression. When you decrease production of neutrophils, you get neutropenia. When you have neutropenia, the person is more susceptible, susceptible to uh, febrile neutropenia. This is where someone on chemotherapy gets a high-grade fever, and this is most likely due to an underlying infection. Myelosuppression can cause uh, thrombocytopenia, low platelets, and so the person is more prone to bleeding. Myelosuppression can uh, cause anemia, and when you have anemia, you uh, essentially feel tired all the time, lethargy, and decrease oxygen supply uh, to the body. Now, it's important to know how to manage each of these complications uh, briefly. So with febrile neutropenia, if someone on chemotherapy drugs presents with a fever, who has chemotherapy, you have to do a full workup, a full septic workup, investigations including blood cultures, chest x-ray, urine cultures, etc. And finally, it's really important to also give uh, prophylactic antibiotics until the organism possibly is found. Another important uh, drug to give is granulocyte colony stimulating factor, which will hopefully help um, with the production of the neutrophils. For thrombocytopenia, it's important to assess the medications, particularly if the patient is on antiplatelet drugs, such as aspirin and clopidogrel, can it be stopped? Another thing is if it's too very low, the platelet count, potentially a platelet infusion, and even some cytokines uh, can be administered uh, to help promote uh, platelet production. For anemia, blood transfusion is given. Um, blood transfusion is given to those who are symptomatic and usually have a hemoglobin below 80. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video on the acute uh, side effects of chemotherapy drugs. Um, the chronic side effects of chemotherapy drugs will be discussed elsewhere.